welcome to another installment of Vintage Migo. This episode is something I've been meaning to do since I started this, but I'm glad I waited because now it's a really good story. You see, after the blast that was Migo Meet 2019 and the lack of sleep and umpteen hours of driving and all the abundance of the dealer's room, the last thing I wanted to do was get in my car and look at old toys. Nope, this weekend was supposed to be all about home renovation and just enjoying my backyard. However, a few days ago, I got an email from my friend Jeff, who runs a place called Cool Stuff Toys, wondering if I was interested in a piece. It was such a special piece that I got in my car and drove three hours round trip to go get it. I'm pretty content with Mego collecting as a whole. It's rare to get excited about a piece these days for me, but oddly enough, both stores that I frequent in Hamilton, which is where Jeff's store is, have found a cool Mego piece I have had to have in the past 30 days. The other store was Bounty Hunter Toys, had a vintage Tweaky on the card from Buck Rogers that I wanted, but luckily for me, he showed up at Mego Meet and I was able just to get it there. So, I present you with what I had to have, a Parkdale novelty Superman figure in the Superman the Movie box. Before you say somebody swapped the figures, they didn't. This is a legitimate variant and quite proven, although it mainly shows up in Pin Pin Toys in France. Parkdale novelty's relationship with Mego goes back to what I can tell to be the 1950s, when Parkdale's founder, Morris Kotzer, would often do trips to Japan, then the leader in toy manufacturing, with Mego's founder, D. David Abrams. Uh, Parkdale Novelty became Mego's exclusive distributor in the 1960s, where they was basically called the hush-up toy era. Uh, they brought in Fighting Yank, they brought in Mouty Mod, and according to his family, Uh, Morris Kotzer was very enthusiastic about Action Jackson, and judging by the amount of overstock available in Canada, probably way too enthusiastic. Parkdale Novelty did extremely well with the world's greatest superheroes, Planet of the Apes, and Star Trek brands in Canada. They aired the same commercials, and in fact, the tape everyone has of those commercials, you can thank the Kotzer family for doing that. They're the ones who transferred them. Around 1976, Morris Kotzer approached Mego Corporation about making a 12-inch line of superheroes. He believed that they would sell better than the 8-inch versions. Mego was resistant, so Kotzer ordered enough to get the product produced. He literally put his money where his mouth was. They even owned the original prototypes. This hand-painted resin Superman went for $1,200 on Hakes a few years ago. The first wave of these characters included Batman... Superman, Spider-Man, and Robin, who is scaled to be shorter than the adult heroes. The head sculpts on these are wonderful, by the way, almost like actors playing the characters. There's a little bit of photorealism to them, and that's one of the things I really love about the aesthetic of these. The boxes were meant to represent the colors of their matching 8-inch World's Greatest Superhero counterparts, and the artwork is surprisingly crude. I wouldn't be surprised if it was done by Parkdale themselves. It looks like someone traced over some popular comic books. Now, Parkdale did include Mr. Fantastic and Captain America on the Spider-Man box, but when I asked Morris's son, Lauren, about it a few years ago, he, he didn't think they had any plans to make him. He was just there as filler. While Mego was iffy on the 12-inch line in the United States, their foreign sales agents did a fantastic job in Europe where the 1-6 scale was still king due to the different iterations of G.I. Joe that were very popular, you know, Action Man, Action Team, Group Action Joe. By 1977, you could buy the 12-inch heroes in Canada, France, Italy, the United Kingdom, and I believe Australia. Most of the time, the distributor would just slap a sticker over the Canadian box, but later on, they would print their own boxes. Canada got saturated with these. They were absolutely everywhere. And I remember flipping out when I saw the Robin. He was my seventh birthday present. And I was so excited to have a Robin that looked the way Neil Adams drew him. Combined with the success of the 12-inch Wonder Woman line, Canada really had a good presence of 1-6 superheroes. And yeah, I ended up buying a lot of the same characters again. 
Mego did eventually see that success and follow suit with their own 12-inch line in 1978. However, they made significant changes to the figures. They gave them bulkier bodies that were taller. They changed the head sculpts on all of them. They added new characters such as the Incredible Hulk, which Parkdale picked up and sold in their own box. They weren't sold in the boxes that replicated the color scheme of the 8-inch heroes either. Also, in an effort to compete with the Remco energized superheroes, Mego created the flyaway action gimmick around 1979 and began adding it to the figures. That's why you see sometimes the boxes with flyaway action stickers, and other times it's pre printed. It's because it was a running change. In Canada, around 1976, Mego began splitting distribution of lines to another company called Grand Toys. I was told initially Grand got lines that Parkdale had passed on, like Cher, Comic Action Heroes, and Muhammad Ali. Grand Toys was run by, I believe, a schoolmate of then-President Marty Abrams. Somewhere around 1978, the box for 12-inch Superman was switched in France and Canada to capture the sales heat from Superman the movie. Parkdale did not pick up any other characters, and they continued to use the Superman figure they created. In 1979, all Mego distribution went to Grand Toys. This is likely due to the relationship and their incredible success with Micronauts. So a lot of weird stuff came out during that transition. 8-inch heroes often had the words Parkdale Novelty scratched out on the cards and a Grand sticker placed over it. Grand Toys began bringing in lines like Superman the Movie. However, you could still buy the 12-inch heroes from Parkdale Novelty, so it was likely these figures were on the shelves together. The U.S. versions of the 12-inch Mego heroes, like Magnetic Batman and Robin, also began to appear in the Canadian marketplace in Grand Toys boxes. So the landscape of the late 70s was a little confusing to a kid, especially considering the only difference in the 12-inch Hulks was the logo on the box and flyaway action. It's pretty difficult to find the 12-inch line in Grand Toys boxes. They probably only had one or two years at best with it and likely ordered in very small quantities. Parkdale Novelty had to order a big opening order and had plenty of inventory. I honestly remember finding them stores in the mid-1980s, and these were like newly opened stores. You may have noticed also that Diamond used to sell 12-inch Batman and Spider-Man in their catalog in the 1990s. That originally came out of Parkdale Novelty. Now, I will get into the big Toronto Mego warehouse find in another video because that's not a short story, and it's one I really want to take my time with. So there you have it. A true bit of Canadian toy history and a real oddity. Very few toys would have me out on a Saturday morning after Mego meet, but this is definitely the one. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll hit like and subscribe. And you can hit me up here or at the MegoMuseum.com forums. We have a Facebook group called Megomania with over 5,000 members. I hope you'll join us. Until next week, take care.